Hello and welcome back to another LookDevX video. This is a bonus video where I want to show you how to use the Material X shading nodes within LookDevX. As you can see, this dinosaur is the one we used before, but now it is fully shaded in the viewport and we have lots of control and um, flexibility using the Material X nodes. Granted, you need to work a lot more with those atomic nodes. At the moment, the Material X graphs will export properly for other render engines to use that support Material X and obviously USD. All right, so now let's have a look at the LookDevX graph. And similar as in the previous video, I have my Dino3 container at the top level. And we have parameters. You can see we can dial in the dirt levels. Right now, I didn't play with the height, but that's super easy to implement. And then we also have our coding. You can see that it all works very nicely in the viewport. And uh, I will show you a very cool features that are possible using the material X nodes. So this is the graph. Um, as I said before, it's a little bit more, there's a little bit more nodes for a little bit less of the functionality essentially. But if you use the atomic nodes, you can see I've using lots of compositing nodes and a T to see what node names we are using. We've got ranges, color cracks, position values, remaps, pluses. So it's all very similar stuff. A cool thing is I pretty much created this whole shader using the viewport and you can easily also use the isolate mode for just a viewport. So that's super handy if you wanna quickly get to a very good place already. So for instance, I can have a look here at my roughness values. Then you can see here, I'm plussing in the dirt levels. And right now, uh, you can see now the dirt levels are coming in. We get more roughness at the, at the legs here. Dirt is there. Got the normal maps here at the bottom. So it's pretty cool. And if I render this now, it's a little bit more bluish because I think the color correct nodes are not, or they just probably work a little bit different. But you can see the dirt levels are coming through very nicely and the roughness values are transferred as well. Now let's go a little bit in, in detail what, what is actually going on. So by default, all we do now is we use the Material X nodes, which are in the, if you tab MTLX, you get these. Or if you search for them, it's more, ma mainly the ones which are lowercase. So the first thing what we do, we pull in our base texture. You can see that's how it looks. And then the first thought was, okay, how can we create some variation? That's something actually I did not expose at the moment, but we can quite easily, let me just expose this hue shift to the, to the outside here as well. Let's just make this, maybe rename this to color variation. And now we have this on top level and we can quite easily play around with colors. And again, if I render, it works seamlessly. So how did I do this? Because we do not have, for instance, the Arnold color correct nodes, which have a mask input. So what, what I'm doing here, first of all, I need to have a mask. So the mask is created using a separate node, which allows me to separate the RGB components. And then I'm using the range to just contrast my colors. You can see now it's super handy to be just able to dial it in the viewport without needing to initiate the render. So it's very fun to work like that. And then I have my mix node here and my color corrected node. So you can see I've got this one. Funny enough that it kind of has an alpha channel. Okay, we actually change it. Color alpha is one. Yeah, so you actually have transparency as well. But the mix nodes, they just support color three. We can, could use color four, but we just want to use with RGB values. And then in the end, if I look at this now, you can see that the mix is limiting where the color corrects are kind of blended in using this mix operation. And then very similar to the dirt, I'm creating or using the position pass, which is set to uh, world position in this case. We could change it to object if we want to, but then we get different coordinate systems similar as in the previous video. But on world, we just have our Y axis. So I'm using the Y channel here. I'm then using a range to kind of limit the height and see if you can, you can shift shift drag, but you can just try, um, slide this in here and then you get the nice vertical fall off. And then this is kind of done the same way. We're using a mix and then we're just mixing with our sand color or dirt or whatever color. And then with our original, and then these are 
I think the outflow is exposed, which is the dirt. And then we can just blend it in super nice. We could use similar as in a previous video, use a noise to break up the height. But uh, I just want to show you very similar ways you can just fully do it in Material X. And then for the specular roughness, there's our base texture, which looks like this. I color corrected it slightly, actually very slightly. I just gamma it up a little. We should always try to clamp. So clamp, it, uh, sorry, so gamma down makes this more wet looking, more, more shiny. And then we have our fractal 3D, which is just some kind of noise. It has a couple of parameters. You can add more details using the octave sliders, Make maybe using diminish. I, I'm just playing around myself, not fully sure what all these values do. And then we're using the mix to kind of blend the two. We could maybe use a plus or a max operation, but in this case, we're just kind of mixing them together. Very subtle, just to get a good breakup. And then similar as before, we are then using an inverted range from our previous setup. Are we inverting that and then plussing this on top of our roughness map? So the legs are just getting more rough wherever there's dirt. And if we then disable using Shift X, we can now see that we get nice specular on the body and then very rough looking legs. And this should just show you a way that you can quite easily do everything in Material X as well. But as I said, you just need to be a little bit more open to playing around with all these nodes. You've got lots of compositing nodes, you've got the adjustment nodes. So there's a, there's a little bit more of a learning curve probably if you're not super familiar with those yet. But you can definitely achieve a lot with them. There's also cool things like uh, Llama nodes, which are quite atomic PBR shaders, where you can create your own your own layered materials. You can just use a diffuse shader, you can stack them. So there's lots of room to play with and explore. And now I can save my scene. And this is now sort of another material USD file. And whenever I feel I can now go to a different DCC, let's for instance, say we are going to Houdini, I can go into Solaris, load a sublayer, load in my MDL dinosaur, and then we get exactly the same result. And whatever other DCC supports that, you will get a very similar result. And the cool thing about this is you can then use any other supported render delegate like RenderMan or V-Ray, whoever supports uh, Material X and USD should be able to render just fine. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this bonus lesson for Material X shading graphs in LookDevX. And I hope you enjoyed the full LookDevX series, how I made it in Maya.